Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Jasmine Robinson. Um, I know that I've been away for a while, but I'm trying to tap back in. Um, I just wanted to discuss the, for the last time, um, the young adult power of attorney journey, as well as an electrical engineer. But today I wanted to discuss the young adult power of attorney and electrical engineer status update kind of lifestyle. I wanted to start off today by giving you some background information if you haven't seen any of my other videos. On December 5th, 2020, my father and I's life changed drastically due to COVID-19. My father was diagnosed with COVID on December 7th, 2020, and on December 5th, 2020, he was admitted into a hospital and completely unconscious. Shortly after, he was diagnosed with COVID in addition to the fact that he would never wake up or be able to do anything outside of breathe. Prior to being hospitalized, my father was on zero medication, zero pre-existing health issues, and never hospitalized. First, I want to start off by showing you an image of what my father looked like in 2020 prior to the hospitalization, in addition to 2021 and 2022. And last but not least, an image of what my father currently looks like. Please feel free to take a look at my previous videos about this. My previous video titled, The Good, The Bad, The Ugly, Power of Attorney for a Parent as a Young Adult. Um, I began this journey as an undergrad senior, and this video highlights the ins and outs of what the journey looked like in the midst of things and how I leverage the following resources to help navigate through the medical negligence that my father experienced and I'll be sure to list the link below in addition to dropping that link in my description for this video if anybody wants to reference it. In this video that I've referenced, I highlighted the ins and outs of what the journey looked like for me as well as my father in the midst of things. In I also talked about some of the free resources available for loved ones in a nursing facility and or hospital. And um, I went into detail on those resources in that video. There were a total of seven resources that I utilized and I'm gonna read them off of my computer one second. So the first resource that I utilized was one, a long-term care ombudsman. Number two, Office of the State Long-Term Care Ombudsman CCC Plus Advocate with the Department of Aging and Rehabilitative Services, also known as DARS. Number three, Member and Provider Relations Specialist, which is through the Department of Medical Assistance Services. Number four, the Department of Community and Human Services. Number five, Adult Protective Services. And thankfully through Adult Protective Services, I was able to conduct an investigation to prove neglect, which was later sent to the Office of Regulatory Agencies that was able to prevent my father from returning to this specific facility. And I have two more resources that I was able to leverage, which was number six, an advocate from the Disability Law Center, and number seven, Office of Healthcare Quality Complaint Forms. So today my father has been diagnosed with several long-term conditions due to medical malpractice. And I'm gonna have to read that list as well because there's a lot of names and conditions that I don't know how to pronounce but I'm gonna try my best and I'm also gonna list it below so that you guys can read it as well. So we have number one, cerebrovascular accident. Number two, adult onset dystonia. Number three, spasticity, specifically quadriplegia. Um, number four, muscle. <laughs> number four, muscle contracture. Number five, paralysis. And number six, 22 stage four, pressure ulcers, which are also known as bed sores, but they are definitely healing up. Um, a lot of them have closed up. They're no longer stage fours anymore. Um, I'm actually pretty impressed with the healing process because I got all negativity in the beginning of this as if it can never heal and there was no hope for anything positive out of them. And after all, all of the progress that has occurred in regards to my father's bed sores in addition to his brain recovery process, um, has led to not only a regular diet, but also my father is completely cognitive and he's able to make decisions for himself now. Unfortunately, the negative aspect of this from 
the medical malpractice that took place is the fact that my father cannot move any of his limbs so he cannot do anything for himself which makes him completely dependent and he needs an aid around the clock which means my father actually needs help around the clock just to do basic needs of living activities uh, for example, turning the TV on, off, volume on and off, scratching, itching, lotion, brushing his teeth. He can't move any of his body parts. And I think that you kind of will be able to see what that looks like later on in this video. I'm going to share some images. So just to give you a warning for sensitive imagery. So next steps include. So number one, I am trying to get a malpractice case for each of the individual facilities and hospitals that my father was residing. And that makes it a total of three facilities and two hospitals. And second, clinical trials. I want to be able to find um, health research studies for either of the following COVID-19 strokes and muscle body contractures. So the goal here is to get him involved in one of the clinical research studies so that we can get the resources necessary and a team that will be more than happy to help. Um, unfortunately, we have yet to get any type of care plan moving forward, even though my father has exceeded all expectations with the expectation of him never regaining consciousness or the ability to do anything other than breathe. So um, now I'm dealing with the aftermath of this and it's kind of up to me to establish next steps. So that's why I went ahead and I started doing research and, and it led me to these three next steps. So that's step one, step two, and step three, a surgical approach for his legs. Um, the title of this process from my understanding will be complex contracture releases. And I'm gonna have to read word for word for this one, but basically, um, they need to release the muscle contractures. Uh, I think the biggest question now um, moving forward for either of those steps is how did he get to this physical state? And honestly, I do not know. It's kind of heartbreaking. I have taken time to look back at videos and images of different times in the, in the journey. And I honestly am kind of like, it's very disheartening. Um, it's very sad to know all of the things that he had to endure in regards to not obtaining the care that he deserved and needed. Um, but I hope that this can serve as some sort of resource for someone. So thankfully today, my father has made a lot of progress and exceeded all expectations from a brain perspective. And I actually took some time and recorded some videos of him so he can speak for himself. And I'm really excited to share with you guys what his responses were to a few of my questions. So from this point on, I'm going to place the question on the screen and then I'm gonna play his answer um, respectively. So, so enjoy. How have you felt throughout this process, physically, emotionally, and spiritually? I felt uh, exercising and getting my, my limbs together so I can move my hands and emotionally. I just feel like I came from a long way and I'm happy that I got love from my family, my daughter, my mother, and my friends. Absolutely. Amen. Huh? Amen. God is good. Yeah, God is good. And spiritually, God is good. Absolutely. And I've been blessed to make it through my illness. Absolutely. And um, can you show people how you can move your arm? And uh, can you let them know it, how your other body parts feel? I'm kind of like, I can't, I'm contracted. 
And what does that mean? I can't move it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, not Nothing else? else? I know. I move my toes. You can move your toes? Yeah. Is it? Um, not really. Oh, yeah, a little bit. Yeah. A little bit. At least you can move your head. Yeah. Absolutely. Amen. Thank you. Yeah. All right, question number two. Has anything stood out to you throughout this entire journey um, from a, a good perspective or a bad perspective? Well, a good perspective is that I'm at a place that, you know, where they try to take care of me and, and um, they try to, you know, give me back to normal health. Absolutely. And, um, they, they even the bad thing is, uh, <laughs> I can't, you know, I, you know, I can't, you know, I have to have business, and I can't be with my family yeah, like I want to. Yeah, that's a bad thing. Okay. Absolutely. Thank you for okay. sharing. Okay, so next question. What do you hope to improve on in the near future? And what is your end goal for your healthcare journey? I want to improve my ability to move my arms and my legs and to be loved by my family. Absolutely. And do you have like another end goal that you want for your healthcare journey? Maybe a living situation, a physical situation, anything like that? My end goal is to try to move in with my, somebody in my family and, you know, get a wheelchair. Absolutely. I'm working, I'm going to work real hard to get to the wheelchair Absolutely. by getting my arms together so I can get in the wheelchair. All I need is one arm, my right arm. Absolutely. Thank you. Why is it important to share your story? It's important, it's important for me to share my story because uh, I want, you know, I want people to learn that you can always overcome bad situations and, you know, strive to be a better person, and, you know, mentally, physically, and uh, emotionally. Absolutely. And the final question is, what does your day-to-day -day life look like? My day-to-day -day life for now, since I've been in this situation, is... I watch TV and listen to music. I still like to my daughter brought me and talk to my daughter on my phone that she bought me and talk to my loved one when I can and that's my, that's my day to day life. Thank you so much for watching our video. Um, thank you for participating. I love you. I love you too. All right. This is put your hand up. <laughs> I hope that this can serve as a resource for someone and I'm also open to hearing any type of feedback, suggestions, or recommendations. And as always, thank you for tuning in. I really appreciate it. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.